Welcome to today's broadcast. Today I just want to talk about dreams and this is a, a series. So we'll do four parts. The first part will just be an introduction to dreams, just to learn uh, about how God speaks or communicates to his uh, creation. Then the second part will look at uh, the sources of dreams, where dreams come from. The third part will look at uh, the types of dreams that are there. Then the fourth and final part will discuss uh, the symbols that are found in dreams and how we can interpret dreams. So before we start uh, today's uh, session, let us just uh, commit this into the hands of God. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. Father, we bless your name. We commit this broadcast into your mighty hands. Lord, I commit the viewers into your mighty hands. May you touch them. May your weight reach their hearts and transform them. May it bear forth fruit, 30, 60, 100, 40, to the glory of your holy name. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your guidance. We pray through your blessed Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much, viewers. Um, we know that God is different from idols. Idols, they've got mouths, but they do not speak. They've got ears, but they cannot hear. They've got um, eyes, but they cannot see. Our God has got eyes. We are told that the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth. God has got ears. He hears our prayers. When we pray, He hears. He's got hands and is able to act. God has got the mouth and He speaks. He communicates to His creation. He warns us. He expresses uh, his love, he tells us how much he loves us, and so on. Um, there are many ways through which God speaks to his people or to his creation. Um, we may not talk about all of them, but uh, one of them is through dreams. Let us go to the book of Joel chapter 2, verses 28, and uh, hear what the Bible is saying. Joel, which is uh, just a book in the Old Testament. Joel chapter 2, verse 28, it's a famous one. It reads, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. So here we are told there is a promise that God is making that in the, in the near future, or in future, he was telling his prophet that in future, I will put my spirit on all flesh. And one, once I do that, they will be able to hear me through dreams, visions, and prophecy. And we are picking on one, dreams. We are not saying those three are the three means that God uh, can only speak to us. There are many. God can speak to people through situations. He can use someone to speak to you. He can speak uh, to you through thoughts. And, and so on. So here we have a promise that God would speak to his people through prophecy. Now let us uh, look at the fulfillment of this scripture. Let us go to the book of um, Acts chapter 2, verses uh, 14. And hear what the Bible is saying about this. Acts chapter 2, verses uh, 14. The Bible reads, but Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ye to my words. For these people are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. So here Peter is telling them that what you are seeing now, these people are babbling in tongues. They are not drunk, but it is a fulfillment of what Prophet Joel said. The prophecy that he gave. And what was the prophecy? Now Peter is uh, recalling that prophecy. In um, verse 17 it says, And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. 
and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. So here, Peter is saying, this is the fulfillment of this prophecy. The last days that Joe talked about has just begun. So the last days started on the day of Pentecost. That's what Peter was saying. And the, the, these manifestations that you are seeing is just a fulfillment of that scripture. God speaks, and one of the ways he speaks through is uh, dreams. Now, the question that we can ask is, uh, um, what message does a dream carry? Or oh, before we answer that question, let us look at uh, Job 33, another verse to tell us that God speaks through dreams. Job 33, verses uh, 14. Job 33, verses uh, 14. It reads, For God speaks in one way and in two, though man does not perceive it. God speaks in one way or another, yet man does not recognize the voice, yet man does not understand, yet man does not notice. So here the problem is not that we, God does not speak or God is not speaking, he speaks, but the problem is man, because man is failing to perceive what God is saying. And then in uh, 15 says, in a dream, in a vision of the night. So he is telling us that one of the ways that God speaks to man is through a dream, in a vision of the night. Hebrews, to the Hebrews, um, a dream and a vision of the night are the same. They do not put a distinction, a distinction between the two. And then, um, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on men, will they slumber on their beds? Then he opens the ears of men and terrifies them with warnings. So through dreams, God can give you a warning. Just like um, an example of uh, Joseph, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. When he dreamt, God told him, there's someone who wants to kill the child. Go to Egypt. It was a warning. Then at night, Joseph, the wife, left and went to Egypt. When they were in Egypt, again, God appeared to Joseph in a dream and told him, the man who was seeking to destroy the child is now dead. Go back to your city. So he had to go back to his city and so on. So God was guiding him, he was warning him, and so on. Um, 18. He keeps back his soul from the pit, his life from perishing by the sword. So to keep our souls from going to the pit, God gives us a warning through dreams. So he may give an instruction, he may give a warning, he may reveal your future, and so on. Uh, 26, then man prays to God and he accepts him. He sees his face with a shout of joy and he restores to man his righteousness. He sings before men and say, I sinned and perverted what was right and it was not repaid to me. He has redeemed my soul from going down to the pit and my life shall look upon the light. Behold, God does all these things twice, three times with a man. So it's not just once, God does this oftentimes speaking to people. The question that you may ask is, uh, remember I posed the question saying, does God speak to believers and non-believers? The answer is uh, a definite yes. God speaks both to believers and non-believers. When we read the, script, uh, the scriptures, we start the Bible, looking at the life of people dreamt, we discover that he spoke both to those who believed in him and those who did not believe in him. Uh, when we read uh, Mark, I mean Matthew 27 verses uh, 19, we are told that uh, Pilate's wife had a dream that uh, she should not have anything to do with uh, Jesus. So when Pilate was trying to judge or to pronounce a judgment, the wife told him, my husband at night had a dream, a terrible one, and I suffered so much in my dream. Please have nothing to do with this innocent person. So that is uh, the first case. But there are also others. We read of uh, Nebuchadnezzar who had a lot of dreams. He was a pagan king. Pharaoh in Egypt, the king of Egypt, also had dreams which were interpreted by Joseph, 
that was a pagan king who never believed in God. They had their own gods. Uh, Laban, who had the idols when he was pursuing uh, Jacob in Genesis 31 verses 24, God visited him in a dream and warned him. Okay. So God also spoke to Abimelech in a dream in Genesis chapter 20 verses 3. When Abimelech took Sarah as a wife and God told him that you are a dead man. The person, the wife, the woman you've taken is someone's wife. So we see that uh, God speaks to non-believers. What about those people who believe? Yes, God also speaks to believers, people who had faith, people who trusted in him. We have a lot of those people in the Bible. We had uh, Daniel. Daniel dreamed about uh, um, the beast coming from the sea. He had, he had uh, other dreams in uh, Daniel chapter 7. Um, we had uh, Jacob. Jacob's son, that is uh, Joseph, who had uh, so many dreams before he, was, uh, before he was taken to Egypt. And those dreams were fulfilled in Egypt. There's also Joseph, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who was warned from time to time about... Uh, so, we have established that God speaks and God speaks through dreams. This brings us to the end of our 